CBN News has closely followed the controversial practice known as pay to slay as we saw in our last story. Now we have accounts of how the Palestinian Authority brutally tortured its own citizens who tried to save the lives of Israelis by preventing such attacks. As CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell reports, dozens of Palestinian abuse victims are breaking their silence. We warn you, the stories are graphic. What do you call a man who saves the lives of innocent men, women, and children? A hero? Not if you're a Palestinian preventing terror attacks and saving the lives of Jewish Israelis and others. I know this isn't right to go and kill people on the street. This isn't right to blow up buses. But that's not the view of the Palestinian Authority, who condemn this man and others as collaborators for helping Israel. Some say thousands of Palestinians underwent torture, even death, for acts the rest of the world would call heroic. That's why an Israeli law firm here is representing 52 accused collaborators and suing the Palestinian Authority for compensation. We have the privilege to uh, represent uh, those uh, Arabs who were tortured, uh, to give a little bit of comfort and to try to protect those people. The violence took off in the 1990s after the signing of the Oslo Accords between Israel and the PLO. That's what's called the peace process today. Terror was rampant in Israel. There weren't just a few Palestinians that were helping Israel to fight terrorism. The Oslo Accords required the Palestinian Authority to fight terror. But according to attorney Barack Kedem, that didn't happen. The Palestinian Authority that had made a deal with Israel in the Oslo Accords carried out actions against those collaborators that were trying to prevent terror. They captured them. They imprisoned them in conditions that were very hard. They tortured them, a torture that was hell, to get a confession from them that they helped Israel. The stories are hideous. They took his little sister, a teenager, brought her to jail and threatened him, if you don't confess, we'll rape your sister. They had no red lines, so he confessed. But it didn't help. She was murdered. What she went through until she died, we don't know. It's really like ISIS. This man, who will call Baber to protect his identity, was taken in for questioning. They entered the room and asked, when did you start working for the Israeli Shabak? I said, I don't work for the Israelis. This was just one kind of torture he endured. They tied your hands and feet and head. They beat you from every direction until you fainted, cursing from the morning until the night. You're just a dog. In the end, you are going to die, and we will throw you on the garbage. We'll do this and this and this. We will rape you. According to Babir, he faced no official charges or had his day in court. His parents couldn't visit and the Red Cross was apparently never notified of his confinement. Every day for seven months, 